And to those of you who are, are gathered here, whether you are the children in front of us or the supporters, the caregivers, the parents, the friends, thank you. Thank you for your advocacy on behalf of yourself and others. Over the years, I've had so many different visits from, from young Alaskans who've come to me and they've, they've got their little story booklet and there's pictures showing them over the years as they have as they have dealt with their diabetes, but also what they have done as individuals who are, are brave enough, willing to make the long trip to Washington, D.C. to come and tell their stories. So I join my colleagues up here to encourage you to do more of the same. Somewhere out there is Samantha from Wasilla. There she is right up front there. Sam, I'm looking forward to visiting with you, but but it is, it is an effort. It is an effort. And I know that as young kids, you just want to be like everybody else. And everybody else doesn't have an insulin pump. Everybody else doesn't have to prick their finger. Everybody else doesn't have to do what you are going through. Everybody else's moms and dads and caregivers don't worry about them and what is happening with their blood sugar levels. But this is why, this is why, again, you need to share your story. You need to make sure that others understand not only what you're going through, but why it's so important that we find, we find that cure, we find that treatment. So thank you for what you continue to do. I want to direct my, my question here to, to Dr. Rogers. And, and many of us have asked this same question along the same lines, Senator Tester, Senator Hyde-Smith, uh, and, and now just uh, Senator Britt, in, in trying to understand a little bit more about some of the um, environmental exposures that may contribute to uh, risk of developing type 1 diabetes. In, in my state, of course, we're very, very rural in Alaska. Uh, we have, in the overall Alaskan population, we have a, uh, a rate of 7.5% of Alaskans that have Diabetes, Alaska Natives have a higher rate at 8.5% of our population, so it is significant for us. I was in the North Slope, which is the, the furthest north area, small villages up there. Um, went through the grocery stores, uh, as, as much as you can call them a grocery stores, but the fact of the matter is, there is no fresh produce. In other words, there's no lettuce, there's no carrots, there's no peen, peas. There might be some occasional potatoes. There's no fruit. So how do, you get, how do you get your vegetables? How do you get your fruits? Well, you might get them frozen if you're lucky. Um, you might get your fruit in, in heavy fructose syrup. But the reality is, is the diet is a consideration for us and a huge concern. So as, as you're looking at not only the... the, the the access um, uh, in, in rural areas to, to health care that can provide for screening, that can provide for that treatment, um, I'm, I'm worried about areas where we simply, where we're literal food desert when it comes to, to those healthy foods. And as, and as many in, in our rural villages have transitioned from subsistence foods to the commercial um, processed foods, it has resulted in, in escalating um, rises uh, of diabetes. So I'm assuming, uh, Dr. Rogers, as you are looking at this um, in your TEDI study, this part of your review is also under careful consideration. Absolutely, Senator. Uh, that is uh, an area that I think we're going to learn from some you know, general principles that will illuminate a lot of of the origin, you know, of, of, of this condition, particularly type one diabetes. But I think the, the factors that you just outlined, particularly, you know, uh, food islands or, or, or areas uh, and the types of food really may be pushing up the, the numbers of, of individuals uh, at risk for, for type two diabetes uh, as well. And even those with type one diabetes, of course, the food is you know, very important in terms of um, 
uh, of maintaining, you know, uh, const relatively constant uh, levels of blood sugar uh, throughout the day. Uh, you know, the, our, our role has really been in trying to develop the uh, science basis to allow uh, you to inform your policy decisions. One of the things that we're doing, um, that I'll just say quickly, is we, we, we have a, an effort called time-sensitive uh, uh, studies in which we tr when there's going to likely be a change in policy, for example, the development of rail systems or, or, or you know, new food delivery systems or things like that, uh, in an effort to diminish the uh, amount of, of uh, overweight and obesity or perhaps making foods uh, better available. And we want to see whether it really does have an impact. We try to get these investigators to get rapidly funded for these studies so they can get baseline information very quickly. And then as policies are, are enabled or established, one can then study six months, a year, two years later to really test the hypothesis on the effectiveness of, of such legislation. So something to, to sort of keep in mind, we really try to take a multifaceted approach to, to our research. Uh, and, and again, as I mentioned earlier, rural health is certainly an area of enormous disparities that I think we have to keep our eye on. Thank you for that. And Madam Chairman, I want to thank you and, and Senator Shaheen, all those that have been working so aggressively on this. You know, Senator Kennedy um, articulated very well uh, that, that the, the efforts that we're making to reduce the costs of insulin make it affordable. Well, it may be, it may sound like a lot of money. I think when we evaluate and consider the cost to our overall healthcare system when, when not properly diagnosed, when not screened early enough, when not given the treatments necessary. Those are the costs that are out of sight and are, are something that we have to address. So I'm with him on his yada, 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 or as I said, blah, 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 it's kind of the same thing. Let's do more than just talk about it. Let's make sure that access is there until we can find the treatment. Thank you for your leadership on this. Senator Peters, thank you so much for your patience.